Are we good on the other issue that Jeff brought up? We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Today's question comes from Chris S., who asks, With the holidays coming up, what does one get for the gamer that has everything? I have a friend who is the game buyer for our group, mm -hmm. so he doesn't need games, but it would be great to get them some accessories for the games they have. What do you recommend? Well, thanks for the great topic, Chris. Um, I just hope this one doesn't get out too late for people who, uh, for people, and they haven't already finished their holiday shopping. So really, this advice should be evergreen. So even if we're past the the um, actual Christmas season, there's always birthdays, other occasions, and all the holidays again next year. Absolutely. So uh, what the thing um, about buying gifts for gamers is I already have like someone talking about the game buyer and the game buyer has all the games so he doesn't need more games and i think this is true for buying games for gamers at any point in time it's always hard to buy more games you never know exactly what the person's tastes are going to be and you're not sure uh, what games they own already or what games other people may have bought for them i always find it safer to not buy specifically games or new games for a gamer Unless they hand you a specific wish list, like, hey, here's my Amazon wish list, go shopping. That's completely different because then you know you're getting them something they want. And while using the Amazon wish list, if you buy it, it drops off the list so no one else will see it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's it's always especially dangerous at the holidays uh, if you're not using wish lists because you never know what, you know, Aunt yeah. May or Uncle Ted are going to have bought you. and. Yep. While odds are good that they aren't going to have gotten you, you know, the next hottest uh, hobby role playing or hobby game, you never know. They could, you could have some cool that's aunts true. and uncles out there who are uh, got their thumb on the pulse of BGG. Yeah, that's exactly it, right? I actually have some relatives now who will go on Board Game Geek and look at the top 100 list. Little do they know, I own like 80 of them. So, again, their odds are pretty slim that they're going to find something I don't have. And if I don't have it, there's probably a reason. That's the other thing, too, is even when you're shopping for someone, there's often a lot of reasons. Besides reasons we buy games, there's a lot of reasons we don't buy games. And there may be a reason we haven't picked up a specific game. Um all right, so looking at some specific non-game gifts for the gamer in your life, um, one of the first things I thought of when I saw this question was back in August 2018, we had one of our, our more popular episodes was whether or not box inserts are worth it. And if it's worth investing on getting various organizers for your board games. And our end result after our discussion at least in my opinion, was that if there's anything you can do that will get a game to the table more often that or get a game to the table that otherwise wouldn't get played at all, then it's worth it. So one of my strongest recommendations are box inserts or some form of inbox organization for um, the, the, the person's favorite games. I'm assuming if you game with this person, you know what their favorite games are, that you play with them enough, what are the games they break out all the time, or what's the game, even better, that they say, oh, I want to play that, but you know what, it takes too long to set up, or oh, I want to play that, but it takes so long to put away. Those are the ones you want to get box inserts for. And if you play with them all the time, you may know perfectly well which is the game that takes yeah. too long. There, there is a little bit of self-serving in this one as mm -hmm. well, because you're going to get to play the game more often, or you're going to get to do yes. less work putting out or or putting away yes. the game so this 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 one benefits everyone not just the game owner there you go yeah it's, it's also a not so subtle hint to just buy it for the game you always want to play and they don't <laughs> that, that might be another way to point it out so in um now that we're nearing the end of 2020 there are a lot of options for box inserts back when we first covered this only two years ago there were like three main companies that did this and they're still around, but there are so many more choices right now. Um, one of the cheapest alternatives, if you're trying to stick to um, lower cost is folded space. They do foam inserts and the bonus of a foam insert is it's light because that is your disadvantage to buying a big wooden insert is it greatly increases the weight of the game. Another huge option nowadays is going on Etsy. Pretty much if you search any game and insert, you'll find something and it'll be a combination. You're going to be able to find um, uh, foam core. You're going to be able to find plastic. You're going to be able to find wood and you're going to be able to find 3D printed. The other thing, while you won't find this on Etsy, is just search for STL files. 
is doesn't everyone now have at least one friend with a 3d printer at this point and if you don't supposedly the local libraries have them i haven't tried it myself i do know at least five people in windsor with 3d printers now so get the stl file and get them to print it up for you just make sure it's not your friend who's doing the printing because they may figure out the gift a little bit ahead of time <laughs> um regarding foam core you can find patterns for various foam core inserts for pre again pretty much every game on board game geek um, there are game trays. They make molded plastic inserts, though those tend to be specific for specific games. Um, Meeple Realty, Broken Token are the two big names as far as wooden inserts are concerned. A uh, newer one to that uh, company is E-Raptor, which does their, their inserts are flashier, we'll say, than Meeple Realty or Broken Token. They, they tend to theme them. They have extra artwork. You can even buy stained wood, but of course you pay for that added look. So they make kind of higher end ones. Um, another uh, alternative fold folded space now is Insert Here, which is another company that does foam inserts. There are just a ton of them nowadays. Like basically find that game, Google game box insert, you'll find all kinds of options. Now, one thing to think about is if you are buying a wood insert, while they are nice, they, A, as you mentioned already, they add weight, mm -hmm. but they are also uh, time consuming and, and require effort to build so mm -hmm. if that if your gamer if, if if your gamer friend isn't really that sort of handy person who's going to be want to you know working with a rubber mallet and glue and and assembling this thing because it, it, mm -hmm. it requires assembly um you might want to hold off or go with one of the other options again the foam ones while they require assembly are generally easier to assemble yeah. than the wooden ones if not as sturdy if you really want to give a good gift, give it to them assembled. And then you've done all the work for them. Though if they like modeling, then you're going to yep. want to give it to them. So it, it really depends on the person. I do know a number of people out there that would love fully assembled box inserts because they don't want to spend the time themselves. There are some major uh, hosts of shows out there yes. <laughs> who hate the idea of assembling them. Yes, yes. There are, there, there are a couple podcasts out there that happily pay their fans to assemble inserts for them. They actually buy them online, get them shipped to the fans, and then the fans ship them to them, and they pay them to, to assemble them, which is pretty cool. All right, next, the, the next thing I thought of. So so first thing I thought is organize their games, right? Get those games to the table more. Get something so they can clean it up and they can get it out quicker. Um, the best inserts, of course, also help enhance play in some way um, by you know making things organized on the table. Next, I have component upgrades. This is extremely generic. Like this covers a huge wide range of things. Uh, the first thing I think of is there's a company out there called Meeple. No, not Meeple Realty. Meeple Realty is the other company. Meeple Source, sorry. I, I didn't put it in the notes. Meeple Source is the company which I first discovered at Origins and what they make is custom Meeple. Now when they launched, they were literally Meeple. Like they were, they, they repainted Carcassonne Meeples really. Now they've gotten huge into all kinds of upgrade components from, um, again, custom meeple, uh, different types of player pawns, upgraded components. So instead of wooden chits, or sorry, instead of cardboard chits, you have wooden things. I own stuff from them. Like one of the examples is I own the corn for Zolkin, which actually looks so much cooler than the little wooden tokens. And I have little corn and big corn. I bought the fish replacements for um, fleet. So instead of having little blue cubes when you're fishing, you have little blue fish on your thing. And there are a huge number of different things. Now, they're not the only company doing it. It's just it's one of the big names. They kind of did it first. Uh, the other thing I've been finding a lot of nowadays, again, Etsy's a great source for this, is 3D printed components. And stuff you wouldn't think of. So one of the highlights here that I can think of is two particular ones. One is an upgrade for Imhotep, which is a game we've talked about many, many times on the show. And there are a couple different people out there who are making 3D components where like the boats are 3D, like you expect that. You're like, all right, 3D boats. So yeah, it replaced the cardboard token, but they also have things that go around the monuments. So there's like a, a scaffolding that goes around the, the one thing and other various cool 3D printed stuff that makes the game look more Egyptian themed instead of just a bunch of cubes. Interesting. Um, the other one is Everdell. Everdell is a very popular game that has a big tree that's a center place for it. Well, they have people have been making component holders that look like half shells of nuts to sit with the theme of it, and they just look so great. And I'm like, oh, that looks fantastic. Nice. Now, the other thing you can do too is um, replacement components for um, 
like resources. Um, this could be any type of, there's clay out there, there's resin, there's again, 3D printed, there's wooden versions. Uh, Stonemeyer Games offers various packs for all their games. So if you play Scythe, you can get a Scythe upgrade kit. If you play um, Wingspan, I, actually, Wingspan I think has an upgrade kit, but they, Stonemeyer produces sets specific for their different games. Plus they sell generic upgrades that can be used with any game. So that's a good one to replace like um, your gold bars with actual gold pieces of metal. They're not actual gold, but like they're painted gold and so on. Um, another upgrade is get rid of that paper money. If you're buying for a gamer and they own power grid, get them a set of poker chips or metal coins or something to replace that paper money. Um, metal coins can often be bought for specific games. Again, Stonemeyer produces metal coins specifically for side, but there are enough generic ones out there. Another useful one is poker chips. Now, of course, the, the industry standard now for hobby board gaming would be the iron clays from Roxley, but you could just get standard poker chips. The, 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 the iron clays have the advantage of not having spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs on them and looking like a casino chip. So I do like those better. Similar to poker chips, for those of you who play Savage Worlds or um, Hero Clicks, you can get custom bennies. So those are things you give out during the game or fate tokens for people who play fate games. Or um, another example is an initiative card set for any RPG that uses popcorn initiative. And all these are is a set of cards that say that you've gone or not. So if you've gone, you flip it over. If you haven't gone, you flip it back. And then you have a bunch for the NPCs. There are companies that make sets where you could get your own printed. Absolutely. Now, the, yep. now a big source for this that came out of nowhere in the last few years is board game geek themselves they have this whole thing they now call the geek up store and while there is some amazing looking stuff there i haven't tried any of this because their shipping to canada is terrible but if you can get them at a con which i realize that's ironic to say at the end of 2020 but if you can find them at a con you can get this stuff plus i think the shipping to the states is better uh what they do is they make plastic replacement components for pretty much the cardboard chits in most games. Like the first one I saw was the Orléans geek up set, which replaces all of the wooden discs with like plastic, almost, almost poker like chip, like, but smaller um, discs that you'd pull from the bag. And they're like plastic and they clack and like, they just feel so much better. One of the very popular ones they have, the most popular one on their site for a long time was for Quacks of Quedlinburg which is a game where you have a cauldron in front of you and you're pulling out various regions out of the cauldron trying to make sets. And they're cardboard pieces that you're feeling in. Well, they've replaced them all with plastic. So again, you reach into the bag, you feel all the plastic components and you peel them out. There are tons and tons of these geek up components. Again, they're a little pricier, but like it's the people at Board Game Geek, right? They take it very seriously. And they make sure that they, if they're components that should be upgraded, that need to be upgraded instead of just upgraded for the sake of upgrading. Like it, it's, they're definite improvements. You can pretty much replace the cardboard in most of the popular games. Absolutely. There's uh, there's some fantastic stuff out there. And I, if you're, depending on which game you're into, they really uh, sort of branches out. You know, for Catan, there are a billion options oh, yeah. for how and what you might want to upgrade. Uh, Terraforming Mars has got a pretty wide range oh, of yeah. components you can upgrade. Uh, so any game that has a table presence at all is going to have, depending on its popularity, various levels mm -hmm. of upgradability out there uh, from you know your various buyers like Etsy and BGG. All right, the next one I got noted here is neoprene mats this is something i would have never recommended say even five years ago i'm thinking like it's it's been in the little last little while um rising sun then when i got that kickstarter copy that was one of the ones that convinced me i have now fallen in love with gaming on a neoprene mat consider picking up a mat for your gamer's favorite game there are tons out there either official or not um, if you can try to make sure they didn't steal any artwork, that is a bit of an issue with some of these mats, but almost any game that can use a neoprene mat that has some form of player board, there's one out there from somewhere. Someone's created it. Like there's one of the ones that's on my wish list personally is there is a two player Azul mat 
that does the central marketplace and both player boards that you can just roll up. And I'm like, oh, we talk about playing that at a bar. That'd be so perfect to roll it in a bar. Plus, neoprene is nice and easy to clean. <laughs> I've seen mats for almost every popular game. Um, the other thing is if you can't find a mat for the specific game, generic mats are also a good option for most gamers. Now, you can get all kinds of ones. You can get a like a star map for sci-fi games if you do i do suggest getting at least three by three because that way it's perfect for x-wing and legion and all of those star wars games and miniature games um the other thing i would consider is like a water pattern that's great if you're a big Catan fan so you've got your lake around your island but it's also good if you're doing any like naval battle games you can get just a, a green mat for a generic field or just a plain bat, black mat like even if it's just plain black giant mouse pad it's going to be great for keeping components in place and making things easier to pick up, which for me is huge. Anyone who's gamed with me laughs at my lack of ability to pick up things off tables. And having something there helps so much. Uh, also, if you are a fan of chunkier dice, or especially metal mm. dice, yes. you want to have some sort of protection for whatever surface you're rolling on. Yes. Um, and uh, we'll get to some other options for that, but a neoprene mat is a fantastic one for that. One thing you're going to want to pay attention to is the thickness of the mat. Uh, just be aware that the thicker the neoprene, while it's going to cost a little bit more, it's also significantly higher mm -hmm. quality. So your five millimeter mats are going to be much better than a one or two millimeter, yep. uh, you know, cheap little uh, mouse pad and have a, uh, a better durability. The other thing that I've seen, and I don't know a lot about it, and this was a big deal with the uh, Rising Sun mat, is the edging what they've done to protect the edges. Yep. So I know that's a stitched edge, which is supposedly better protected. So that's another thing to watch for when you're looking at neoprene Yeah, because you could either get a stitch, stitched edge or they could even do a ceiling, which is basically yeah. just a heat press. Uh, and that will, over time, give way essentially yep. more than a stitched edge will likely. Now, one of the big sources for this now is Game Toppers, which is a company that makes tabletops that you put on top of your like dining room table to turn into a game table. Well, all of those have a recessed play area. And while they now have, they, they started off by making mats for their tables, but people like the mats so much that you can just buy those. So Game Toppers is actually now a great source for those at various sizes. So that's one of those. If you want to get something big enough to co cover your whole table, you probably could. And I guess I didn't put it on this list officially, but Game Toppers, if you have a lot of money and really like your gamer friend, I guess you could get them a Game Topper. Though I would recommend if you're going to do that, get your group, right? If you've got an RPG group or a game group that gets together every every Saturday, maybe you can pull your money and could get, get something that big. But jumping back to neoprene mats, I also wanted to mention for RPG fans, this would be a really cool one. If you're playing in an established world, especially you're playing in D&D, &D, right? And you're playing in the Forgotten Realms or you're on Athos or you're in um, whatever, the Sword Coast, you can often get mats showing the maps from various D&D adventures, like an overland map of the DM's campaign world of choice. I think it'd be a really cool kind of over-the-top gift that I, I don't think anyone would expect. Absolutely. Uh, and oddly enough, I actually, sorry, just out of, as I was Googling something about neoprene mats, found that there are some uh, tabletop uh, miniature battle mats that are 15 millimeters thick. Wow. That's really thick. So <laughs> apparently some of the miniature games really like super thick. I, I assume they can't be too compressive. They can't be too squishy. But uh, yeah, yeah, 15 I don't know. millimeter thick neoprene mats are available with uh, various maps for... Uh, Cool. Uh, looks like more like um, historical battles. Then talking about RPG maps, the other thing that has become hugely popular recently are cloth maps. This, I noticed, started with a bunch of Kickstarters and Kickstarter stretch goals. There were a whole bunch of these mega dungeons and huge adventures that all of a sudden would come up with this cloth wall map that you could get. And I got to say, that just seems like a really cool gift. Something that, again, would be out of the blue, right? Like, if we've been adventuring in the Forgotten Realms for a year and a half, and then you show up with this map I can put up on the wall of the game room, I just think that'd be really cool. Or that I can throw it on the table and put some pawns on to show where we are on the map or something like that like i can even see someone you know if you've, if you've got some grognard fans you can get a map of the tomb of horrors printed up on you know a four by six cloth map that grognard's going to be pretty happy absolutely there's there's fantastic options out there of uh of whatever you want just again try not to try to make sure that 
you're getting something official and not yes. uh, just grabbing and grabbing art off the web. And if you're just looking for dungeon maps, head over to Dyson Logos' website. He has a whole bunch of free-to-use maps. If you're just looking for that aesthetic, the old-school hatch style. Absolutely. All right, moving over to something useful for any game that has dice. I've got these kind of grouped together, but dice towers and dice trays. If you play any RPG or war game or board game with dice, think about picking up a dice tower or dice tray. Now, I'm not going to get into specifics here, and we actually have a question from one of our fans asking us to rate different types. The problem is I don't have the, the resources to go pick up a bunch of different ones, but there are a lot of options out there from very basic drop it in the top with one little thing in the middle that kind of makes it fall all over to like giant clockwork Rube Goldberg-like towers that can stack on top of each other. Um, Broken Token, who we mentioned above in the... Um, or earlier in the talking about box inserts has a series of these dice towers that are like a Rube Goldberg machine where you can stack them in any number and make like a huge thing. And I'm like, that's really cool, but I can see using it once. Like, yeah, I don't want to wait for my, wait that long for my, exactly. my results. I'm, I'm like, they are cool, but I just, 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 you know, I, I don't know, maybe for, for some kind of competition or something, like have it at extra life, and if your die, whatever your dice come out, you get to win something, but not while I'm just trying to play a game. And then dice trays. There are so many out there. Um, I'm going to give props to Easy Roller Dice here because we have one of their trays that I actually really like. It's a hexagonal tray that has a staging area, so you can put the dice you're not rolling on the outside, a rolling area inside. Plus, the op opposite side of the lid is also a rolling tray. Those, again, are very useful, as Sean mentioned, for um, metal dice, right? If you're going to use metal dice, you need something to have uh, to protect your table. Absolutely. There's so many different options from, from you know, uh, artisan crafted wood dice trays to uh, flat, lay flat leather uh, ones that you can that snap together into a, into a tray yep. for easy portability. There's so many out there. And also, if you're getting dice, if the, if, if the gamer you're buying for likes dice and, and, and uses games with dice, there are also some great dice options out there yep. that you can buy. Because one, even if they have a D6, they will want more. There is no real gamer out there that doesn't want more dice. Plus, if you want to, they won't complain if you just get them some fun dice. Mm -hmm. uh, find a set of weather dice or smiley face dice. There are always ways that if you get someone dice, they'll find a way to use them in a game. Yep. So go ahead, buy something pretty as well. Yeah, and if you want something high-end, another thing that's, uh, that's becoming more and more accessible and easier to find, and the prices are going down because of this, are gemstone dice. Dice made of actual gemstones. Now, fair warning, you probably do not want to use them. And if you do use them, you want to use a dice tray. And second, you only want to roll one at a time because when they bang into each other, they will chip. This is, I've been told from the horse's mouth many times that I should stop recommending gemstone dice because they are so fragile. Um, but if you want something that looks great on the shelf, there, there are some fantastic options out there. And Jeff, Jeff in our chat room says, impossible to have too many dice. So yes, right many there, people there's think the so. people out there who, who oh, yeah. will not complain if more dice show up in the stocking. Here, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up for another one that's off script here, not even on my list, because of an awesome Facebook post I shot shared where someone had bought spice jars, and they were rounded at the bottom, and they made those their dice control holders. So all their different colored dice were put on the spice holder and it looked like potion bottles and it was wood and it was fantastic. Right. Okay. So if you do know a gamer with a ton of dice, maybe some way to display and show off those dice. Because they probably have them in a little, you know, Crown the Royal bag. Crown Royal bag. <laughs> yep. All right, moving away from dice. Um, but similar to dice towers and trays, I want to talk about component organizers. Now this is for organizing components at the table while you're playing. This isn't stashed away packing your game away this is for organizing all the various piles of resources keeping your gold separate from your wood separate from your wheat or whatever your game happens to be using now every time we talk about this i always show off the wooden bowls i have they are my favorite to this day but i know they're not easy to find i like these low shallow technically they're salad bowls they're wooden they're really good for that but there are another other options um, from silicon muffin cups is probably the cheapest one you'll find, which is literally just 
silicon muffin cups. And what's great about those is you can toss them in your board game box and they can get squished flat and nothing will happen to them. Um, flat rubber squares. I don't know what you call these, but they're like flat with snaps in the corners and you snap them together and they become component bowls. I, I don't know what else they're called. Um, I've also seen leather versions of those, but the rubber ones are really, again, really affordable and cheap. Um, and then what I've seen more of, and I would love, this is th these are the ones that I'm tempted by, are actual component cups. And there's a couple different companies putting these out. And they're the standard square bowl, but what they have is a spout on one end. So when you're trying to dump the components back into either your organizer or your Ziploc baggie, it's a lot easier than trying to shove stuff out. Yep. And uh, Jeff in the chat room was mentioning earlier, he would be happy with just a box of the small cell phone sized manila envelopes uh, as a way to uh, sort out and organize your cards for right. things or a box of tiny baggies, right? Uh, it's the, I, I, if you give someone a baggies. gift, a box of tiny baggies, they may get the wrong idea. In in your, in the stock, that, that's more of a stocking stuffer than, than you know, yeah, here, yeah, have a nicely wrapped box of, of Ziploc. But uh, yeah. But again, that's, you know, a, that's an odd choice. These are, these I, I are things you need, right? You can it, never have too many Ziploc bags as a gamer. Yeah, true enough. True enough. Now, if you can get custom colored Ziploc bags, those are the really nice ones. The company I got mine from no longer around, unfortunately. And yes, I know some people out there think they're ridiculous, but I loved my custom colored Ziploc bags because I could split up the components by player color or based on what they were for. Like I totally redid my version of uh, Castles of Burgundy so that I had a different colored bag for all the different chits you'd pull out and the color matched the chit color. Though I know some people think that colored Ziploc bags are ridiculous. It was sitting right behind you. Yes. Um. <laughs> All right. Next one. Here's one uh, that I actually didn't think of when I first created the list, but I went back and added it on after the fact this morning is gamer luggage. In particular, um, I, I spotted my quiver card carrying case and I was like, oh, that is a great gift. Um, Quiver Time makes a number of different products for holding uh, specifically they're designed for like magic players or card game players but I have mine holding all kinds of different card based games for example all my cards for Agricola are in my Quiver um, but I also have uh, my copy of Start Player I've got Star Realms in there I've got all kinds of stuff now for those of you who play competitive deck games they have something called the Citadel Deck Box which is the most solid piece of protecting your deck you're going to find like you could probably throw this and get it run over by a car and it'd be fine for bigger games i will recommend multiple times a cajun or cajun i'm not even pretty sure how it's pronounced it's a type of drum it's a k a c sorry c a j o n look for a cajun bag which i i think it's cajon bag um these it's it's a it's a drum you sit on and you kind of drum with it but the size of the bag is perfect for that ticket to ride style box and that is pretty close to the industry standard nowadays and you can fit between six and ten games in one of these things um at more expense now these only cost like 20 30 bucks what you can also find are nowadays board game backpacks or gamer backpacks there are a number of companies putting these out um I can't think of any of the off the top of my hand, any of the brands, but there are a number board, of board game tables.com has, uh, has a great selection of them. Yeah. Um, of, 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 I guess they're just standard size. You can, you can carry them like a duffel. You can strap them on your back. Uh, there's a bunch of different options out there from yeah. the insane to the, uh, Oh yeah. They the go all reasonable. over. Uh, you can, they're, they're all levels are out there. Yep. And then for the role players, there are a number of basically D&D backpacks nowadays that are out there where they've got specific straps for holding your rolled up maps and your map dudes. And they've got a spot to put your rule books and a spot to put your laptop and, and spot to hold your dice and your pencils and stuff like that. There are a ton of these out here. Now, for miniature gamers, uh, we actually talked all about how to transport miniatures back in episode 92, a small problem. Uh, we talked about Battle Flown specifically that company uh just stanley tool cases like for tool and bits organization and various pluck foam options so that's worth checking out um for anyone who likes card games or small box games especially party games things that are in like that that code names just one the crew um 
uh, Fox in the Forest, Fox in the Forest duet, those small box games that don't have a lot in them, I strongly recommend checking out a photo case. These are the kinds that comes in a large plastic clamshell case with a bunch of smaller cases inside. This one, I actually got this tip from Danielle, uh, one of our, our fans who actually happens to be in our chat room right now. Uh, they have a couple of these. Her and Owen, her husband, were like carrying, I don't know how many it is, but it was like 50 games in the back of their car. We showed up to a game night and they just pulled out this like two cases and they're like, yep, I got 50 games with me. And I'm like, that is fantastic if you travel and play your games, especially I said those smaller box games, but you can like, these are big enough. You could flip Splendor as well, because Splendor really for the size of the box doesn't have a lot in it, but it's great for these card games. And uh, also, depending on how you're carrying games, if you're if you're willing to carry them a little more loosely, uh, you can also get uh, spe game game bands or ba bands to hold your games closed, so you yeah. don't have to worry about things popping open in the tray. If you've got you know games in, in your trunk, uh, and a lot of times you'll get uh, they'll actually be the the double double strap uh, uh, bands. Specifically mm -hmm. sized for board games. Yeah, board uh, game bands are a thing. I've never bought them, but I tend to play here to or somewhere them, else. Well, and so. you pack them pretty tight in milk crates. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, yeah I'd, I'd recommend milk crates if you admit those. Technically, you can't buy anymore. Yeah, well, you were never supposed to use them in the first place. Yeah, you weren't, you weren't supposed <laughs> to keep them. You're not supposed to have them. All right, I'm a little off at 50 games. So Danielle's telling 16 or 18 games per case. But still, that's it's what 32 games or 36 games in in in, in like a, in your hands, right? That's fantastic. Here's a little one where you're, you're we're going a little out there. Um for a card game player, you can online nowadays very easily get custom sleeves where you could go get whatever their favorite artwork, right? So if, if uh, whatever your, your, your friend Ham Solo's favorite artist is Frank Frazetta, you could get the Death Dealer on a bunch of car, uh, a bunch of card sleeves. Or even cooler, get something that's like keyed to the specific games they like or the specific player, right? Get, get their face on the card, give them a thumbs up. Um, the other thing you can do too is most players now use play mats which kind of overlaps with our neoprene mat thing, but card game play mats are the same thing, but different. Um, so some type of custom play mat for with whatever. The, if they play magic, you get to the, the latest Akora artwork with Godzilla on it because Godzilla is now a magic card or uh, <laughs> some other, if they play Star Realms, you get them the Star Realm mat that has a spot to put all the, the market deck on. The other thing, too, are deck boxes. Uh, again, this kind of goes with the quiver, but you can get all kinds of different types of deck boxes. You can get them in different size shapes, and you can get them custom made with custom artwork on them. A lot of more print shops are having things like this available nowadays. Yeah, no, absolutely. They're, they're card card uh, accessories have become yes. a major market. Um, and and from from the quiver all the way down to uh you know the boxes the sleeves uh mm -hmm. special display cases maybe you've got yep. you know that black lotus magic card that you'll never be able to play with again but <laughs> you're still proud of you can you can get uh you know custom uh, art frames for mm -hmm. cards so all right again thinking of the custom printing thing in particular other gamer swag uh, this is a huge category, but I kind of lumped it all together because it's all the kind of thing where you go to some website, you upload an image or you pick from what they already exist and you buy it and get it shipped to the person's house or shipped to you. You got mugs, cups, T-shirts. Um, you can get a mug of your favorite gaming podcast or their favorite live stream. If you're a critter, there's all kinds of critical hits. Is that the name of the critical show? Role. Critical Role. I'm like, that's <laughs> not right. I knew I was off. I'm like, that didn't sound right. Uh, you could get something featuring your favorite game or your favorite game designers. There are a number of legit and non-legit t-shirt companies out there with some great gaming themed uh, shirts. I do suggest you do a little research on who you're buying from to make sure they're not stealing the artwork. Um, one of the ones I will recommend straight up is Play RPG and Co. Uh, that's Brian Weiss, who designed our awesome Bellhop logo. Does a ton of different shirts. I was hoping to wear one tonight, but I couldn't find it. Um, I've got a couple shirts that are really cool with a beholder on it and a skull on it. And he's done a bunch of RPG classes and all original artwork. So you don't have to worry about someone or, stealing. Or if you're a fan of, you know, Board Game Arena, you can yep. get uh, swag from, from the uh, your favorite websites. 
if the person you're buying for is a fan of board game arena <laughs> we are shopping for other people <laughs> just again please don't steal images and print your own uh, make sure you're using legit sources uh most companies have some form of swag you can get already including us and and when we're talking about that uh when you're looking for art go out and reach out to artists yeah. um recently on twitter someone got a gift for someone uh who was a huge fan of a certain board game that had a a bunch of great art for it and so what they did is they reached out to the artist on that game most of these artists are all available on twitter or or your favorite social network and they said look my friend's a fan of this game. Mm -hmm. You know, can we get something? And they got a piece of original art from the game as a print from oh, the artist awesome. in order to, uh, you know, frame and hang in their room. So th that's, those options are out there. And now, again, yeah. we're running a little late probably this year for that sort of thing. But yeah, uh, it's those a little options specific. are out there. Um, you know, or even just if they've already got something that they haven't put up, you know, getting someone a frame so that they can frame the art that they've had, you know, yeah. leaning on a shelf for it for years isn't a bad thing either. Yeah. And, and also like if you go on Etsy, if you're just looking for like cool D and D style artwork, or you're looking for a picture of an orc or whatever it happens to be, that's worth doing. Um, I have personally reached out to an artist and got um, them to draw a picture of my dad's character in an MMO he used to play. And that was a very unique gift. And not only did I get the picture so I could frame it, I got it put on some drinking steins because my dad and I like to drink beer together. So we had he has his own drinking stein with theirs, his character on it, that he got to level 85 on his own. Um, so that was a really cool one. So character art, again, my dad's happened to be an MMO, but you uh, can also get yeah. artwork done, commissioned artwork done for your RPG group. Like if you want the Game Master, give a gift to your Game Master, get your characters all drawn up. Yeah, and I had, uh, I actually, I've reached out to people on uh, DeviantArt before, and it's like, hey, look, yep. you've got this fantastic art. I would love to get a copy of this, and I'm going to do this mm -hmm. with it. Uh, and on DeviantArt and places like that, oftentimes they'll just say, yeah, sure, here's the original, here's an original yeah, here size copy, you know, <laughs> and, and just go ahead and do it. Uh, or, you know, maybe they'll ask you for for something, or maybe they even already have it set up through DeviantArt to, mm -hmm. to be able to purchase stuff. But unless you ask, you'll never know. And then similar to that, this one goes to RPGs. Just thinking back from I ran a multiple year spanning AD&D campaign and people bought stuff for that game often. We had uh, the, the group together had a couple iconic um, things in their heraldry, one being griffins, the other being this uh, gauntlet, this obsidian fist. And by the end of our campaign, we had stamps. We had stampers with griffins on them. We had um, one of my friends had actually picked up a banner at a Renaissance Fest. So we actually had a pennant that they would bring to game night. Any of that stuff that means only something to your group, right? Something that personal. So your group of characters together are the Adventurers Incorporated and they have a logo or whatever. You can get that logo printed again, swag on mugs, t-shirts, whatever. But you can even go further and get it themed, like get tabards made or something for your for your group or get your your dm uh the, the the dungeon master hat or whatever something of that type that's specific to your group absolutely all right i got a couple of ones here that are a little outside the box um other media tied to a gaming license so this is again it's broad but what made me think of it is the fact that board games and RPGs are getting more and more popular and more and more mass market. And there's getting a lot more crossover. So there's always been like the TSR novels to go with the D&D &D settings. But like there are things like Gloomhaven has a comic strip that was supposed to be coming out in December called Fallen Lion, which is going to tell the story be before Jaws of the Lion. Now, that's not going to hit shelves until December 30th, so it won't work for this year's holidays. But, like, back in the day, I used to buy Pathfinder comic books. And in the back of the Pathfinder comic book, there was actually a short adventure and a dungeon map tile, which I thought was awesome. And I actually, the, the comic was better than I thought. I was buying it for the cool dungeon tile and the adventure. Uh, another example is the Android Netrunner series of games from Fantasy Flight Games spawn a big enough universe that there are novels you can buy android netrunner novels older series again all the tsr ones have novels battletech the battletech novels have been around for a long time there are a growing number of this other media that's tied 
to games. I even own a paranoia novel. So if there's a particular game someone's into, take a look around. You might be able to find something tied to that license that isn't a game specifically. Absolutely. Uh, and then moving on from that, once you've uh, you know got uh, media tied to a license, you can actually go to digital licenses. So yes. uh, you can get, uh, you know, Steam is an easy place to, to gift things. Although I have noticed recently that there are some problems gifting people across some country borders on Steam. Really? So, so be aware of that, depending on what country and what currency you're working in. There could be some weirdness. But, uh, you know, it's, there are always sales or, you know, things for tabletop uh, simulator or specific games. There's a, a you know, the, the number of board games available on mm. Steam is remarkable. Can uh, you buy, um, I, I don't have one, Nintendo Switch games for other people? I, I know I the no switch idea. the switch is huge for board games like every like you got your ticket to ride your Catans, your cart but like everything's starting to come out on switch now i don't know if that's something if you can i i have to assume you can buy a download code somewhere well, at the very least you can get gift cards for, for right. switch i'm sure so um other options are you know a membership to bga uh you can gift yep. uh gift those or uh tabletop audio or sirenscape as we've talked about on the show yep. for your rpg players or even non-rpg we were using sirenscape for gloomhaven for a while there uh and i and i would ass i wonder if can you do uh our roll 20 memberships or, or anything on i would assume so right like any any of those subscription-based online gaming services especially this year um and leading into next year in the time of covid like if if your group doesn't own tabletop simulator that buy like a four pack of tabletop simulators and then at least your group can get together after the holidays in january and play some games together again yep until things clear up right uh and, and again as sean mentioned specific games if you all like playing terraforming mars get a terraforming mars license so switch yes so you can buy codes for many games and send those you can't directly gift through the store okay but you could get the code and then give someone the code right okay but like i said i know I, I don't own a switch but i i know it's exploded for being able to play board games especially this year excellent all right, well, that's it for our discussion on non-game gifts for gamers. Let's head over to the lobby and see if anyone in our chat room has anything to add. So I see uh, just a minute ago, Anshi Games mentioned a gift card that says, I've commissioned so-and-so to draw your character portrait would be a great way yeah. to, to give that gift when really they probably need a little bit of input. And and doing it would give it away if you started asking them yeah, yeah. questions about what their character looked like. That's true. That's true. I, it depends how well you know your group, right? That's the whole thing. Uh, earlier on, Danielle was mentioning. Uh, it was sorry, I was scrolling. Uh, so I'm seeing lots through. of fans of the muffin cups. Yeah, so everyone, everyone muffin cups is a big the muffin. one. The yeah. muffin cups. Uh, Everyone loves the muffin, man. Jewelry, uh, jewelry cases or jewelry boxes, plastic jewelry oh, containers. Okay. Yeah, for uh, for various storage, yeah. storing game components. Plano would work too. Uh, here's a here's a trick. If you have a, a game hack, if you have a painter who in you are buying for, look at lipstick trays, lipstick and eyeliner trays, the, the basic makeup trays, the multi tiered, you know, three, four, five steps. They are way cheaper than buying a custom miniature um, holder like I have back there. <laughs> so that wasn't bought. Uh, we also see um, an idea of dice boxes that have um, spot on like, sorry, dice boxes that have a bin on the bottom for the dice or the various. That's something I didn't think of were um, all the various dice holders like dice boxes, dice holders. There's the, the ones that will hold for RPGs that will hold the miniature and maybe your cards and your dice. There's a number of those out there. Uh, also, um, uh, he mentions uh, Easy Rollers metal dice are fantastic, but yeah. definitely need the tray because they will do table damage. So I, I just because Jeff Sue suggests it, if you do want to see us review a number of different dice towers, you can support us at Patreon. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mage, is, uh, Mage Kill is mentioning the, the always ever wonderful Laminator, uh, especially yes. for the RPG people, but board game board game lovers too. Uh, yeah. There are always things that you could be laminating to make last longer. Every gamer. A uh, good one for the GM and your life is some type of notebook or campaign keeper. 
uh, whether that being a blank notebook, but there are a number of now designed for RPGs. Like there, there are a ton of those. And heck, let's add to that. How about on the topic of RPGs, there are a number of great books out now that are system agnostic, like the, I'm going to forget the names, but like the, the, the ultimate game master guide and the ultimate character guide. I forget the full names of those books. There's the like thousand and one NPC names. There's Eureka from Ingen Publishing. All of those generic here, this is useful stuff for building worlds or GM advice like um, Robin Laws of Games, Laws of Game Mastering or Play Unsafe is a book all about improv gaming. There are a number of those that are out there. And similarly, there are a number of RPG history books out there that just didn't exist years ago, but now that RPG is so much more popular, so there's, for example, of Dyson Men tells the story of early role playing and TSR and what happened there. Um, trying to think of some of the other ones that are out there. There's there's definitely a, a couple different biographies of say Gary Gygax. Yep. Uh, Jeff pointed out Meeple Source has money discs, which are a lot better option. Well, not I say better option, but cheaper option than Iron Clays. Uh, the number of sweet 3D Catan boards on Etsy have been mentioned. Snack size plastic baggies as a gift. Yeah, people people uh, people love them. So, uh, it, you know, it, it's it, it does seem like a weird one, but yeah, Ziploc baggies, right? It's one of those things that no one ever maybe ever buys. You know, the yeah. little, little tiny ones for themselves, possibly because they don't want to look like a drug dealer. But you need them for games. You just yeah. do, uh, regardless of what it makes you seem like at the yeah, yeah. store. Uh, Danielle was pointing out uh, artistic deck of cards, so yep. a, a themed deck of cards. That's that's a popular one for anyone who plays any of those RPGs we were talking about last week. That use a standard deck of cards. Every person I know that runs Savage Worlds has multiple decks of cards for their game of Savage Worlds, and they have multiple poker chips for bennies, and, and the they're other, usually customized. The other thing is, if they if they if you are using uh, you know cards for RPGs, uh, maybe find a tarot side ver size version of them. That can just sort of you know be a little more fun at the table. That you, if you're if you're playing an RPG game with a standard deck uh, standard deck of cards, poker size is great, but the tarot size just kind of sizes everything up a little bit and makes yep. it fun. And again, you can get some great designs on those as well. Another one that is useful for people, especially who play uh, traditional D and D style games, is some form of initiative tracker. Uh, there's a number of different ones out there. There was one I shared the other day that was actually just like wooden pole that you stuck them in kind of like uh, signposts onto the edge. There's the Paizo combat pad, which is what I used for years, even though I didn't run Paizo's games, but it, it has magnetic strips that are dry erase. So you just write everyone's name on them and you move them around. Um, I, for a long time, we're using above the screen screen toppers right. as we called them back in the day. And now people make those professionally. So you can get some different looking ones. All right. Well, I think that's, uh, gotten through our uh oh, yeah one, draw erase one last markers one. and cards absolutely yep. if you get right on wipe off cards um or if you're getting them a laminator uh <laughs> some dry erase markers Lam to be honest work. dry erase doesn't work that great on lamination like it works but yeah. it's not it's not dry erase like compared to getting an actual dry erase board uh, that's one too get, just a dry erase get board. laminator uh covers specifically for dry oh maybe erase. i, wonder, that I, I know my laminator it's so so like right. you can get it off but it's not dry it doesn't come off easy but i wonder if it's if, if, if like if there's an actual laminator sleeve that is designed yeah maybe for that i know for years and i never did find them all i wanted was a set of flash cards that were dry erase yep like yep. and i never did actually find a set really? that you was get something them at, uh, uh scholar's choice see when i looked they didn't have any oh odd all righty all right finally if you've got a game or game night question for sean and i Head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop. 